Occult Labyrinth Prayer in the Baptist Church. Mark Flynn was right. If there was ever a time Christianity could use Mark Flynn's groundbreaking book, Forbidden Secrets of the Labyrinth, it is now. In his book, Flynn explains the importance of the labyrinth in ancient times as well as what it means for us today. The enemy has humanity entr entranced in the labyrinth, and now the church is embracing it. The labyrinth in various forms can be found all throughout ancient pagan religions. Mosaics of labyrinths can even be found on the floors of Freemason lodges. Now, Christianity has joined the trend. In an article entitled, Labyrinth Transforms Prayer Life, Baptists Say, Baptist News Global reported on a growing trend in the Baptist church. The article says, the ancient practice, which involves walking a maze while praying, has become more popular among Baptists as Christians in general are adopting more eclectic spiritual disciplines. Rita Martin, one uh, who practices this ritual, is described in the article as well. Uh, about her, the article says, Martin said she has always been a prayer, as in one who prays, but now sees her mind often drifted off uh, during normal prayer times. The labyrinth is a very good tool to keep your mind on track and to concentrate on what you're praying for and why you're praying and just communing with God. Martin said her Baptist upbringing offered no position, no opposition, excuse me, to the practice, especially after realizing the leavening effect it's had on her spiritual life overall. I'm thinking, she says, why have we never done this before? So that is in the article. Um, her Baptist upbringing offered no position on this practice, and she's left one wondering why they haven't done it before. Despite the apparent spiritual benefits of the practice, which, of course, is never stated in the Bible for us to take part in, Mark Flynn explains in his book, as well as my interview with him for the Sharpening Report, which you can get at joshpeckdisclosure.blogspot.com. There is a link there in the blog or youtube.com backslash joshpeckdisclosure. Uh, Mark explains why the labyrinth is a tool of the enemy, yet Christianity as a whole sees no problem with the practice. Another article describes the restoration of the prayer labyrinth at a different Baptist church. It states, a group of church members spent the past two months restoring the labyrinth and hopes it again serves as a peaceful reflection spot for residents throughout Waco. It is open to the public and will, uh, and will be formally rededicated in April. It needs to be used, church member Marie Allen said. It's a beautiful space and it's meaningful. Unlike mazes, a labyrinth has one path and a single entry slash exit point. Walkers follow the path around until it meets a dead end center point, the turnaround and return to the starting point using the journey for personal reflection or prayer. I've seen people reach that center point and just start sobbing said Sandy Londos, another church member who worked on the labyrinth. Other times I've seen people get to the center and just exhale. The labyrinth was the brainchild of Lakeshore Baptist member Becky Henderson, who designed the path and insisted that it be wide enough to accommodate people in wheelchairs. The church finished it in 2003 after Henderson died unexpectedly, naming it in her honor. Rick Allen, who is not related to Marie Allen, said in addition to couples and children walking the labyrinth, some therapists asked to use it to help their clients open up more during sessions. He personally used it in teaching lessons on prayer to teen members in a Wednesday night Bible study course in the spring. When I would go through the labyrinth, I would say to myself, stay on the path, stay on the path, and that became not only a mantra, but also a metaphor for finding things that were going on in my life, he said. So that is that article. So vain repetitions, mantras, and opening occult practices up to children. What will be next for Christianity? The irony in all of this is what the labyrinth truly represents, according to Mark Flynn. Greek mythology states the labyrinth was set up with a minotaur in the center. The story tells us uh, King Minos, who has been associated with the Canaanite deity Baal Meon, prayed to Poseidon for help to become the most powerful king. Poseidon then sent him the Cretan bull, which was perfect and snow white. 
Minos kept the bull rather than sacrificing it to Poseidon and instead sacrificed a substitute bull. As a, pun as a punishment, Poseidon had Aphrodite cause the wife of Minos, Pasiphae, to fall in love with the white bull. Pasiphae then committed adulterous acts with the white with the white bull, which was actually Zeus in disguise, and the result was a terrifying half-bull, half-man abomination. This was the Minotaur. The Minotaur required human flesh and was too difficult to control, so Minos, by direction of the Delphi Oracle, commissioned Daedalus to create a huge labyrinth to imprison the monster. From time to time, humans were sent into the labyrinth as a type of sacrifice to the Minotaur. Later, Theseus, a, the uh, demigod son of Aegeus and Poseidon, managed to enter the labyrinth and kill the Minotaur. According to Mark Flynn, this story is rife with symbolism that shows the plan of the enemy. When assigning identities to mythological characters, it is important to remember these stories are being told from the perspective of the enemy, meaning roles, have, uh, roles are reversed. From the enemy's perspective, the labyrinth represents the lives we lead in the physical world, the Minotaur represents Jesus Christ, and Theseus represents the Antichrist. With these representations, the whole Antichrist plan of the enemy is explained for us in the story of the labyrinth. It is the plan of the enemy to usurp the things of, and effectively kill, God himself, thereby freeing the inhabitants of the world from the, lab the labyrinth that God has put in place. With church taking on the occultic and mystical practice of walking the labyrinth in prayer, it is clear the enemy is plunging the church into deception. Of course, this isn't the first time this has happened. There, there have also been the introduction of yoga, angel prayer, and even human worship into the Christian church. If we don't do our due diligence to learn about these things, we will find ourselves falling into, de into deception. We need to stay informed so we do not inadvertently become tricked into worshiping the serpent. As Hosea 4, 6 states, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So words to take into consideration. Thank you for watching. Take care and God bless.